Thank you, Karsten, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I should start by uh, highlighting that this work is the result of a collaborative uh, effort from a group of scientists, including uh, nutritionists, ecologists, economists, social scientists, and models. So the objective of the paper was really to take stock of the contribution of fish to the current debate on, on food security and nutrition. And for that, we looked at uh, basically two aspects, the current contribution of fish to food security and nutrition, and we looked also at the future contribution. Let's start with the big picture first. So overall, out of the 173 million tons of fish that were produced in 2010 by both fisheries and aquaculture, about 75% are actually used for direct human food. Another about 20 million were lost or discarded at sea, and the last 17 million were used for what we call indirect human food consumption, essentially as fish meal and fish oil. Now, putting those numbers in time perspective, the fish supply has basically been multiplied by eight between 1950s and today, which means that in terms of availability per capita, the figures have been multiplied by three, from six kilograms per person per cap sorry per capita per year, we are now at 18 kilograms per person per year. Now, when we compare this uh, fish to the other source of, of food, and in particular the other source of animal protein, it turns out that fish production is broadly equivalent to two times the production of chicken and three times the production of beef which make fish the uh, largest single animal protein source in the world. Something that probably people don't know. Fish, however, is also um, characterized by um, the presence of relatively high concentration of uh, um, long chain polyunsaturated acid, uh, sorry, uh, fatty acid, which have been demonstrated clinically to uh, provide positive protection effect against non-commutative diseases such as high blood pressure, stroke, heart disease, cholesterol, and for young children, brain and cognitive development. The micronutrient content of fish is also unique in the sense that it characterized by a remarkably high concentration of uh, vitamins, D, B, but also minerals such as calcium, phosphorus, zinc, iron, selenium. As such, this has been widely recognized as a key central element in the current fight against malnutrition in low-income and food-deficient countries. However, fish also contribute to food security and nutrition and directly by being a key element in the livelihood of a very large number of people. It's been estimated that about 150 million people derive income from fish-related activities, fishing and fish farming, of course, but also uh, fish processing and fish trading. In fact, when we put together the members of the family of those people, it's more than 660 million people, which means about 10% of the world population, which depend to some extent for their income on fish-related activities. Importantly, the vast majority of those people live in developing or emerging countries where obviously food security and nutrition issues are quite high. The important of a impact, or sorry, aspect of that uh, picture is the importance of women. It's been estimated that about half of the entire labor force which are engaged in those fish-related activities are actually women. So there are very few in the fishing industry itself but they make the majority of the processing factory workers and they represent the vast majority of the small scale fish processing, fish mongers, fish traders and informal, uh, impo uh, informal processors that are operating in Africa, in, in Asia. Unfortunately, their uh, contribution is uh, rarely recognized and poorly accounted for, essentially due to a lack of disaggregated data, but I would also agree, uh, uh, sorry, argue because of uh, a clear gender bias in and outside the sector. Now, when it comes to assessing the contribution of specific sector to food security and nutrition, 
one important aspect is obviously the long-term ecological sustainability of that sector. In that regard, unfortunately, both fisheries and aquaculture have some bad reputation. Um, the world fisheries has been declared by, uh, in crisis by quite a large number of conservation organizations, but also quite few academics. And although there is some current debate about the actual degree of that crisis, I think there is also a general consensus that the situation is indeed quite concerning. <coughs> However, the current attention has been mainly on ecological and economic dimension of that crisis, and we know very little about the actual implication of that crisis from a food security and nutrition perspective. Overfishing is obviously one factor, but only one in a long list of drivers which have had huge impact on both the inland and uh, the marine uh, resources. But pollution, urban and coastal development, uh, offshore activities are also uh, amongst those drivers. So partially related to that point, recovery of the stock uh, will be only one aspect, but perhaps more importantly um, are issues related to the distribution of the benefit that can be generated by the uh, sectors. In other words, increasing or restoring the productivity of ecosystem is only one element in the whole equation. As far as um, aquaculture is concerned, uh, also the sector has been struggling with quite some ecological and sustainability issues, of course. Aquaculture, or at least some form of aquaculture, have been characterized by relatively high uh, prevalence of diseases, environmental pollution, including salinization of groundwater on farming land, deforestation of mangrove, and even some social disruption. The actual impact of those issues actually, but in terms of food security, um, are in fact very diff difficult to assess and to quantify. What the specialists tell us, however, is that that era of unsustainability is over and that those old days are behind. The second important point uh, to be mentioned and, um, here is the use of fish meal and fish oil. Aquaculture has been uh, in the past one of the major users of those fish meal and fish oil, which was, uh, has been a major point of controversy, essentially because the wild fish which are used to generate those fish oil and fish meal are very nutritious small pelagics such as anchovies and sardines and that the aquaculture species which are used to, to feed, to be feed, sorry, which are uh, feed with those fish meal are essentially directed to uh, rich consumer in developed countries, um, which clearly have no problem of nutrition deficiencies. So the question was, could those small pelagic fish have a bigger impact from a nutritional perspective if they were directly consumed by the local population in the country where they're caught? The proportion of wild fish which is used for those fish meal and fish oil has already decreased from about 23% in the 1990s to about 10% at the present time. Okay, so so far we've been talking about the current contribution of fish, but what about the future contribution of fish to food security? So I'm going to be summarizing some of the current knowledge we have about that, but please refer to the paper uh, for more detailed discussion. So in a nutshell, uh, what we can say is that there has been a couple of modelization exercises that have been conducted by different organizations and academics with the objective to try to assess and quantify the future supply and demand on, of fish accounting for both the fisheries and the aquaculture uh, activities. All those different models vary in the initial assumption, in the tools, in the approach, or even in the timelines. But most of them uh, more or less conclude to the same conclusion. Overall, um, it's expected that the world fisheries will continue uh, increasing uh, to reach, uh, sorry, the world fisheries uh, production will stabilize close to its current level at about 90 million tons per year. At the same time, the aquaculture sectors will continue to grow and is expected to actually reach another 80 million ton per year in by 2030, which means that altogether the two uh, sectors will probably produce around 
180 million tons per year in the area of two, uh, 2030. Given the projected production in world population, that means that we should be able to maintain the current figures of 18 kilograms per person per year uh, during, uh, in, in by, by 2030. Uh, that number, however, doesn't account for very substantial difference between different regions of the world. For that to happen, however, a series of relatively stringent conditions need to take place. We will need to continue making some um, progress in recovery of the sustainability of um, the world fisheries. Very significant technological development will have to be made in aquaculture to reduce the dependency on fish meal, but more generally in farm uh, management to improve the overall efficiency of the sectors and discard waste and losses will have to be reduced drastically. The second aspect of that investigation concern um, the comparative advantages, if any, of uh, in particular aquaculture compared to the other source of food, uh, in particular other source of animal protein. In that regard, fish farming actually compares relatively positively, at least in relation to two aspects. First, aquaculture is a relatively efficient system when it comes to protein conversion. For instance, while it uh, takes about 61 kilograms of equivalent grain to produce one kilogram of protein beef, it only takes 13 kilograms of equivalent grain to produce one kilogram of protein fish. Second, aquaculture is a relatively low footprint system, at least when you measure it in terms of nitrogen and phosphorus. You can see when you compare actually fish, it's actually pretty comparable to chicken on far less, I mean a far few, uh, smaller impact than both beef and pork. Actually even some particular type of uh, of species in farming uh, do actually not produce uh, nitrogen or phosphorus, but actually utilized. So, in form of conclusion, um, based on that assessment, it seems that fish does have an important role to play in food security and nutrition, both in the current situation and the future. Yet, when um, yet fish seems to have fallen out of the plate. Uh, I'm quoting here a recent review on food security and nutrition strategy across the globe which conclude that fish is strikingly uh, misleading, uh, sorry, missing from most of the strategy at national and global uh, level. Um, what this paper does uh, not elaborate too much on is the reasons for that uh, overseeing, but it's clear that responsibility fall on both sides. On one hand, I would say that fisheries specialists have probably been narrowing down the issue too much around issues of economics and ecological dimension and therefore fail to build a convincing narrative around the nutrition potential of fish. On the other hand, non-fisheries uh, food security expert seems not to be able to go over oversimplified, oversimplified uh, vision or bias perception about fish being unimportant. Perhaps because of the fact that fish is rarely included in their own training. And all due respect to uh, Professor Stange, I think plants are very important for food security and nutrition, but as these papers argue, fish is also a key element. Thank you.